Amen. Number three, recognize that a church without the Holy Spirit lacks power. The church that I read about in the book of Acts is a church that walked in the power and the authority of God's Word. Miracles occurred on a regular basis. Healings freeing from the demonic enemies of the church were somehow supernaturally converted. Imagine that. And there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm just content with church as it is. I'll have you know that this pastor, this preacher, I am not content with church as it is. I want more of his touch. Come on. When I read about Peter's shadow. I mean, just stop and think about that for a moment. They used to line people up in the streets as Peter was on his way home from uh, wherever he was at just so that his shadow could touch him. Think about the power of the, re the residual power of the Holy Spirit in Peter's shadow. Amen. That would touch people. And can you imagine they would just get up and walk? I can see I've been healed. Can you imagine such a thing? That's the, you say, do we need more of the Spirit of the living God? I say we do because I want to see somebody who's got so much of the Spirit that their shadow touches people and they get healed. Come on. Wow. Mm. Sometimes people say, well, you, you need more of God. Well, actually, it's just the opposite of that. God needs more of you. Uh-oh. Now I went from teaching to preaching. Now I went from talking to meddling. Okay, God needs more of you. All right, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you give God more of you. You, when you say, God, I, 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 it's not me anymore. I, I, don't, I want Bob to be completely dead. I, I want God, Bob to completely die. And I want you to live through me. I want your Holy Spirit to indwell me, to empower me. I want to be immersed in, surrounded by the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And the thing about the whole baptism in the Holy Spirit is that it is not just some one-time experience, okay, where a person speaks in another tongue and then they walk around the rest of their life saying, well, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I spoke it. No, 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 no. You missed the whole point of it. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is an empowerment for you that you walk in the rest of your life. In fact, once you spoke in other tongues a few times, it actually becomes not such a great big deal. Hello? It means to be something that's new every fresh every morning. Ephesians 5.18 says this, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Wait a minute. You know the world don't mind getting drunk every weekend. Hello. Even though they got a headache the next day. Even though well, they're debauchery. I don't know if you ever looked that word up, but that ain't a good word. What it leads to costs some money, gives them a headache. Debauchery is not a good thing. They go, they keep doing it, but it's... It, Paul says, listen, he says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. One great preacher of yesteryear said, there's one baptism but many fillings. Amen? I know, I know that that's true because God wants to be a continual flow of His Holy Spirit. This, Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers, streams of living water. Amen? You know, let me tell you something. It's not a one-time thing. It's like the Spirit of God is flowing out of you. Amen? It's not like the Dead Sea where the, you know, everything comes in there and it just sits still. No, 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 no. You've got to give out. And the more you give out, the more you receive. The more you minister to others, the more power of the Spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I, you see, we, you see, we're blessed because we live in a we live in a place where it rains. Well, at least we need some rain now, right? <laughs> but you know, we do get rain here. If you don't remember Harvey, fifty-two inches. If that's not enough rain for you, you know, I, I don't know where you need to go because that was plenty of rain for everybody. Hello. But I used to live down in Colombia, South America, where they have a dry season, all right? And, and let me, how many of you ever been through a spiritually dry season? Come on. I mean, it gets so dry, you just, you just walk them by faith. Hello? It's just like you don't feel nothing. You don't see, you read the Bible out of discipline and duty, and you just don't get nothing. You go through a dry season, amen? And I remember when it used to finally rain in Colombia. I mean, to tell you, it was an unbelievable day. You'd 
see taxi cab drivers getting out and washing their hair in the rain. And, and I mean, it, people were just, da- you know, there's a song about dancing in the street. Man, that happens. If get, first time it rains in Cartagena, Colombia, after the dry season, people are literally dancing in the rain because of the joy of the feeling of the, of the blessing of God sending rain. I'm just here to tell you that God wants to send a, uh, God wants to break every dry season in the lives of his people. God doesn't want you to feel like church is dry and living for God is dry. And No, 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 no. He wants to pour out his spirit. Come on. He wants that flow of the power of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And Acts chapter 9 summarizes what a life was like, what a church was like in the realm of being a spirit-filled church. Acts 9.31 says this, Then the church enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. I, I, I just believe that God is encouraging this church by the Holy Spirit. Come on. I believe that the church in front of me today, your brightest days are yet to be. Come on, somebody. I see a church that today that embodies all the power of New Testament Christianity. I see a church today whose head is Jesus. Jesus, whose help is the Holy Spirit and whose focus is the Great Commission. Come on. I see a church whose altars are filled with people giving their lives to Jesus Christ. Amen. I see a church whose people are unified, praying, full of the power of the Lord. I see a church whose heartfelt praise and worship touches heaven and changes the earth. I see a church whose message is so clear that lives will be changed forever. Come on, church. We can be that church. We can be a lighthouse to the world. A church that regularly sees people saved, healed, and delivered by the power of God. Come on. But I'll tell you one thing. It'll never happen without the power of the Holy Spirit empowering us to do His works. Because you see, it's not about Bob. It's not about Jereen. It's not about the assemblies of God. It's not about some denomination. It's not about fountain of life. It's about Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus Christ. We need Him. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then number four, we've got to have faith that God will fill you. Faith in the promises of God. Amen. God never fails in all of His promises. Amen. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is received by faith, believing and trusting. Amen. We need to have the faith that God will fill. Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, And without faith it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that what? He rewards. Tell your neighbor God is a rewarder. He will reward you. Seek God and he will reward you. Amen. Seek God. He rewards those who partially seek him every once in a blue moon. Who earnestly seek him, right? He rewards those who earnestly. Listen, you've got to believe that you, if you say, I need the Spirit's power in my life, the same power that was promised to the disciples in Acts 1.8. Let me tell you something. God is not going to let that you not receive that because he honors his word. Amen. Amen. And, and I believe that the call to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit is as personal and individual as a salvation call is. It's personal. God is saying to every believer here this morning, what do you believe that I could do through you? Do you believe my word? Do, are you willing to give more of yourself to me? It's a faith thing. It's a faith thing. Never forget one time as a young minister, I was at a, at, at a meeting of pastors, probably 500 pastors at a meeting, and, and I mean, this guy got up and he preached about the Holy Spirit empowerment and how we need the Spirit of God, and, and I mean, he preached on the anointing and the touch of God and great men in the Bible. I mean, he just, he just laid it out there, man. I, he, he made me so thirsty and hungry, hey, you know, and so he gave the call. I was on about the third row. I was the first one down. I thought, man, I'm going to get down right in front because there's going to be a massive rush. You know, there wasn't the rush I thought there was. Only a few of us. I left that service thinking to myself, man, that's pathetic. If the preacher can't say, I need the Holy Spirit, hello. 
If the preacher can't say, the pastors can't say, God, fill me anew and afresh. I need your touch. I, I need your power to take the gospel to his lost and dying. What, what, what are we doing just having church and taking up an offering and going? What, what's that all about? I don't know about you, but I want to see people saved, healed, and delivered. And I can't do that. I need God to do that. Well, let me give you a few uh, let me talk to you about some doubts that the enemy will try to tell you about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Why you can't receive it. The first one is this. He'll tell you, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. I mean, you know that Satan's the accuser of the brethren. He's a liar. I'll have you know that no one's good enough for any gift from God. Am I right? No, you can't get good enough. I don't know how many how hard you're going to, we need the Holy Spirit to help us cleanse, be, be, be good, amen? Amen. And, and, and so let's replace that lie with the truth. Come on. The truth is that we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When God the Father looks at you, He doesn't see anything but the blood. Come on. He sees that that person's covered with the blood of Jesus. But you don't know, Pastor, the things I've done in my past. You know what? God intentionally forgot those things. Who am I to think about it? or anybody else to think about it. Come on. We're forgiven. It's gone. It's wiped clean. Come on. Amen. It is not about being good enough. It is about faith and trusting in Him. And then there's a lot of people who are afraid, in particular when it comes to speaking in other tongues. They say to themselves, you know, it might just be me. I'm afraid of that tongue talk. It might just be me just making words. Let me tell you, fear is from the, Lord, from the enemy, right? Yeah, that fear hinders them from taking that step of faith. I mean, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And this gift is a gift that requires cooperation between us and the, and the Holy Spirit, right? It requires cooperation. Amen. Now, how many of you know that God loves to be worshipped when we raise our hands? Right? That's a scriptural thing, by the way. You know, the devil stole that. Go to any concert, they got their cell phone out, they got this out, they're doing this number all over. You know, they stole that from the church of Jesus Christ, I'll have you know. Amen. You know, the one who said that is God. God says, lift holy hands, to, lift your hands to me. God loves that when we do it. But how many of you ever had the Holy Spirit just jerk your arm up there like that? Uncontrollable. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen like that. You know it doesn't. It's an act of your will to bring your arm up, right? You can sit there like this. I ain't going to worship today. Or you can go, I'm going to worship God today. I'm going to lift my hands and praise Him. Right. How you know, after a while, your hands get pretty heavy, right? Then it becomes a sacrifice of praise. And an aerobic workout. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> now, let me tell you about speaking in other tongues. The Holy Spirit does not come upon you and grab you and force your tongue to just begin to speak in another language that it does not know. No, that's not the way it works. Hey, you know, speaking in tongues is a step of faith. We're going to talk about that in a moment at the end. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it, and it will be yours. Let me tell you something. If you ask God for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, would He not give you that? I cannot imagine that God would say, Oh, Lord, what? I'm going to give them something bad. They're going to do something. No, 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 no. God is a good God. Come on, tell your neighbor God's good. Amen. All right. Another lie is this. I might not receive. <laughs> Come on. That's That's doubt. Mark 16 and verse 15 says, These signs will accompany those who believe. They will speak in new tongues. God is faithful. I have never seen anyone who persisted in seeking who did not receive. I've seen some people that sought God for a while, that prayed for a while, that went after God. They scrutted the Scripture. They prayed. They stood, And then one day they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I have never, but, but let me tell you, sometimes people give up too easy. We've got to do it away with every doubt. And here's the last doubt. I tried once and didn't get it. Tried once and get I tried to go up. I got prayed for it. And I didn't speak in tongues. I didn't get the baptism. No, no. Quitter. You know, God will use everything to teach us persistence in prayer. I don't know about you, but I won't be like that little widow lady. Hello. Uh-huh. 
Hey, keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. God's going to give. Come on, asking and shall be given unto you. Knocking the door will be open unto you. Seeking you. If you want the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in your life, He'll give it to you. Come on. Amen. Amen. You've got to believe. Galatians 3.14 says, So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Number five, ask in prayer. Amen.